guys, this is Dodoid. So, a couple days ago, we took a look at some benchmark scores from this Dell using this GTX 750 Ti. And doing so involved this power supply, which I just sort of perched on top of the machine and called it a day. But I want to try installing this power supply into the Dell today. This power supply is a little bit longer than the one it comes with. So from what I've looked at, it should fit. The process is going to be a little complicated. All right, so we're going to have to start by disconnecting all the power supply cables from the inside. Some of these already seem to have been disconnected. Might have taken these out before. But we can take this down off the top. And yep, that's out. So, we're going to take the motherboard out, to my understanding. Let's push on that. I do like the way these cases make taking out PCI Express cards so easy. You just have to push on that little tab back there, and they can come right out. Take out the Wi-Fi too. We're going to take the antenna off for that. Maybe not. Okay, antenna comes right through. Okay, now we can disconnect SATA. I'm going to try to leave this front panel connector plugged in because I'm not totally sure how that goes on and I don't want to bother messing with it. So I hope I can take the motherboard out without disturbing those. But this one will certainly have to come out. This one's for the power switch at the top. That was the strange positioning I discussed in the first video on this machine. So we'll take these screws out. It looks to me like this is pretty typical um, MATX form factor stuff. Here we go. You can use this one. Looks like there's one over here that probably has to come out. And this is my concern about the front panel connectors. I have to find a way to get this board out. All right, fine, I'll disconnect the front panel. It looks like it all just goes into one big block. So I might be lucky here. Yeah, it's one big connector. That's not, that's not too much of a problem. Of course, it would be a problem if you ever wanted to put a different motherboard in this machine or put this motherboard in a different case. But for the one it comes with, it does make disassembly a little easier. And there's our motherboard, which seems to be fully out. There we go. All right, we can probably now try to put the power supply in. So, this is the new power supply. Probably gonna have to bend this out a little to get it in. It will take a bit of work. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we just need to get it aligned with the hole, and there we go. So let's put the screws in the back now. All right, so now we need to screw the new power supply in. It looks like it's not totally up against the back of the case yet, so we might have to adjust it from the inside a little bit. All right, that's in there. Now let's put the motherboard back in. All right, so the new power supply has quite a few more cables, but that's not too much of a problem. We should just be able to put them up at the front here. And that's not too bad. Just get those out of the way. Okay, so now we gotta put the board in. And I think I'm gonna do like I did before, kinda put it in on an angle. It's a bit tricky with these power supply cables in the way.
All right, let's try that again with the power supply cables out of the way. I wonder if I could find how to take this fan out in the service manual. Well, I'm not totally sure how, but the fan popped off in my hands, and now we should be able to install the motherboard. And now that that's held in not too bad, we should be able to put this fan back in. Alright, so I'm going to try another one of these rubber pins. As you can see, you pretty much just pull. And eventually, the other one just popped through the fan housing. I've never dealt with these before. They're really weird. Well, there's one. Okay, so now that the surprisingly hard to reinstall motherboard is back in, we should be able to begin reconnecting it. So it looks like... This will go up to the system fan header, um, which it can't reach. Okay, now let's take the fan off again. All right, the fan has now been rotated around. So now we should be able to reconnect that. There we go, that works now. Reconnect this right here. We can put this four pin connector back in. This looks like it's for the PC speaker. This thing, maybe for a light or something. And then there's the big connector, which I've routed up to the top. You can bring that back down and plug that into the board. Okay, so now it's time to screw the motherboard back in. All right, let's put the Wi-Fi card back in now. In no particular order, you can do the graphics card next. All right, we can put that back. Now it's just a matter of reconnecting everything to the power supply. So we have CPU power up there. We'll route that down there. We have the ATX power connector. That's there. this for the graphics card. Oh, and it just barely reaches, but it does. That can plug in there. Our SATA power can go in there. This can go back inside the case. We will reconnect the hard drive cable. This is a little tricky with the graphics card in there, but I can do that. And finally, we can hook up the CD-ROM up at the top to the power. And we can probably just hide this away up here. Perhaps do the same for this. That is one thing to be said for the original power supply is it had precisely the right number of connectors in precisely the right places. This one, not so much. 
though of course it does have the crucial PCI Express power, which the other one lacked. All right, so there's the Dell put back together. Let's put the side panel on. And we'll put that on, and there we go. So if you did enjoy the video, then please do make sure to subscribe as we're still a very, very small channel. It does help us grow. And until next time, bye.